Bortle here with our guest today, Hani Jahari. What's up, man? How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Nice. So basically, over the weekend, you were you topped the first ever three v three YCS. Is that correct? Yep. Um, I played uh, Thunder Team Scott Robertson Page. The event pre went pretty well. So me, me, and uh, Christian played basically the same Thunder deck as in Cam played the Salad deck. We played Danger Thunder. Uh, me and Christian decided to take it upon ourselves to play this uh, Danger Thunder list featuring uh, Guard Dragon Pisty, and uh, people really didn't know how, what that brought to the deck, but I felt like that card made the deck just so insane for this weekend, and we played the uh, the prize card, Chaos Emperor, the Dragon of Armageddon, and uh, we just, you know, played some very, a very techy deck. I don't know All if you right, want to get in. Uh, we'll... Uh... Don't mean to cut you off right there, but I'm looking at the price card right now. Who, uh, so someone lend you guys two copies of this card? Yes, uh, James Chow. Shout out to him. Shout out to him. Oh, that guy's nice. Uh, yeah, yeah if you would like, nice. let's uh, jump into your deck profile. I have the Thunder Dragons up front right now. Yeah, so, uh, basically, uh, it was a very standard, uh, Thunder package. You know, three Thunder Dragon, two Dark, two Roar, one Hawk, one Duo. Uh, the reason we played one hawk for this event uh, was because it was like the biggest brick. Him and duo, you don't really want to see. You you really never want to see those cards in your hand. You'd rather just search them off a of dark. Uh, the reason why we played two roar was because roar could add back like hawk or duo from the graveyard to the hand. So if you ever got them discarded by dangers, you could just add like recur them to your hand. So we felt like roar was a little bit better than the second the second hawk. So. Uh, that was basically it for the Thunder package. Everything else is pretty standard. You don't want to play three dark because it's too bricky. Uh, we played one Bigfoot. The reason for Bigfoot was because when you summon off a Jackalope, sometimes you want to summon a level eight because we do play rank eights in the extra deck, like uh, the Galaxy Eyes uh, Cypher Dragon. So that's the reason for Bigfoot. I played Bigfoot so you could pop Floodgates, uh, which was very important, like summon limit and... You know, there can only be one. Just all those weird floodgates. Uh, Christian took it upon himself to play Thunderbird, which I just felt like was incorrect. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, he realized it was incorrect as well, and I think he's switching over to the only odd part of the danger package. All the other ones are very standard. Uh, only one moth because um, basically after resolving it the first time, you never want to see it again. So that's, true. Uh, That's yeah. true. uh what about uh chupacabra did you guys feel like you needed to play that at all or uh no, none of the other dangers they're just too risky to play you get like no benefits off of them like the only one like like e like bigfoot's kind of risky already i don't think we would have put another risky one in so yeah uh now for like the dragons which is which there is a lot this is literally a thunder dragon deck so there's a lot of dragons in this deck we played three wyvern buster uh, two uh, color, uh, color serpent. We didn't want to play like three color serpent because it's too bricky, and we didn't want to play one because if it got discarded off a of danger, your engine's cut off. So we tried to play like five to like make sure you get all your searches through. And like late game, you're gonna use double the uh, double black dragon, and you kind of just want to see these in your opening hand. And if not in your opening hand, you want to draw one off of Staryuja because like that's basically the whole guard dragon combo. So. Yeah, you probably want to play five at least. Flip Wyvern. This is obviously, I feel like this is obviously the best card in the deck because of how much it brings with Pisty. Um, there's a little combo you could do with it. I'll explain that later on. Then the Arc Brave combo is uh, Arc Brave, Goliath. Uh, basically, it was there to shut down the extra deck. Now, beforehand, this wasn't very important because, like, the, the field in the past basically won the game. But now, uh, this package allows you to play through hand traps and also allows you to beat the salad deck like uh, very easily because when you make Dark Matter, you get to send Goliath. And when you return Goliath to the field, it just shuts him out from the extra deck. And against the salad deck, that's, that's basically just enough to beat them. So, like, even so, like, they could just like Ogre you, Ash you, Valor you. It doesn't matter. As long as you get to Dark Matter, the game is over. Like, you should just win. What are the main dragons you send with Dark Matter? And I believe it's a cost too, so that's just a win-win, right? Yeah, it's just a win-win every time. You'll send Goliath, Arc Brave, Eclipse Wyvern, uh, 
if not Eclipse Wyvern, uh, Diabolos. It really depends on the situation, but people usually figure it out, you know, as they're playing. You, you'll, you'll know which one you need when you're playing. Um, do you ever had a situation to where you could not do Dark Matters effect? That's pretty hard, right? No, no, that's not. It's very, that's very slim because you, you also have like you could also just ditch like one of your white dragons or black dragons. It was not that big of a deal. Uh, the the prize card. Now this card uh, brought a lot to the deck. Um, it's actually it actually could be easily repro replaced in the deck as well, in here, and I'll explain why. The main combo with this card was, is you banish it off Eclipse Wyvern, you add it back with Eclipse Wyvern, de summon back the Eclipse Wyvern, and then banish Levy in here. Point you could scale the Armageddon and then add back the Levy in here, and then put Armageddon in the extra deck. But you could literally just do the same thing with a third Levy in here. You just need to summon the Levy in here and then add back the Levy. So, I don't know if that makes any sense, but... So, um, the price card's more of a flex than anything, or do you prefer the um, price card route? Um, I don't really know. Like, I felt like they were both really good, honestly. I I honestly like drawing it late game, and plus, like, it clears fields sometimes, too. The effect does come up. Like, people would think that effect just doesn't come up, but you could literally send your whole field to the graveyard, and it just doesn't matter, because you could just make another push and kill them so um yeah i felt like it was good for that reason do you actually use the field effect yeah i used it a lot i felt like that was a good effect also like it it does come up sometimes where you could like burn the burn them for like an extra like 300 to go for game which is like very odd but it does come up and then i played uh the one diabolos uh, this card just pretty standard same with levine here uh, we played two Solar. We never wanted to play, like, we didn't want to play three because we didn't want to play way too many normal summons. You're already drawing off a of Danger, Sekka's Light, all those cards. So, like, you never really wanted to see, like, multiple normal summons. I felt like my worst hands were the hands where I opened too many normal summons. So, yeah, I would probably not play more Solars. Uh, Triple Sky Blaster is the best card in the game. <laughs> Basically summons. It's literally Scapegoat, so... In my in my opinion, it's literally just one of the best cards in the game right now. Same oh, with Sucker's Light. That's pretty nice. Yeah. Same with Sucker's Light. Like we're basically playing banned cards. Like we're playing Sky Blaster, Summons Tokens, Sucker's Light draws two cards. Like this deck is literally just like unbalanced. And it's the perfect and, forty card deck too. Yeah, perfect forty card deck. Um Sucker's Light, you know, just draw two, recycle hands, nothing too much to explain there. Uh, onto the side. This is, like, going into this event, like, we felt like side deck was very important. And I, I think we actually had maybe just the perfect side deck for this event. Um, three Lancia, three Phantasme, three Panker Tops, three Twin Twister. Uh, let's start with Panker Tops. Uh, Panker Tops is a very, very unusual card. I, I was saying I would have never played this card after the UDS. I honestly thought the card was terrible. But recently, I felt like the card has has gained some popularity because of cards like Summon Limit and the Mirror Match. Because you could summon it under the, Sar the Saryusha Zone. You could attack over Goliath. And then you could uh, destroy the Hot Red. So, like, that basically outs, like, basically out the whole board by itself. Because, like, outing Colossus is very easy. So... I felt like that was really good, and when you're versing the uh, striker deck, outing the floodgates is very important because like that deck literally just can't do anything to to this deck if if they don't have like summon limit or or a floodgate protecting them. So I felt like this card was just really good this weekend. Probably my one of my favorite cards in the side deck, and it's like the best card to side in when you're blind siding. So I felt like that was just really good. Also very good against the salad deck because you basically they basically only end on one back row. So this baits it. It's basically like an MST in that matchup. And not only that, it also attacks over Sunlight Wolf and stuff like that. So you could clear mo most of their field and then pop a card. So that's pretty nice. And it sounds like you're psyched for the foil printing coming out. Oh, definitely. Definitely. We're definitely psyched for the reprints. Um, and Phantasme, what can I say? This card has just been outstanding in the last couple of months. Uh, very good against the striker deck, uh, good against the salad deck because of how much they link, and it's also good in the thunder against the thunder deck because 
of how much they link summon as well. So like Phantasma really nothing too much to explain. Uh, Lancia though, uh, this has some explaining because a lot of people seen this in a lot of people's side decks, which is crazy. Uh, we didn't think that many people were going to catch on to it, but this card basically stops the Thunder deck from doing what it has to do. Uh, like you can't Dark Matter under it, you can't do the Guard Dragon combo under it. So like, I feel like Lancia was just too crazy of a card this weekend not to play. I'd, uh, I would say it's it's just a standard in the side deck at this point until the Thunder deck gets hit. Um, next, Sphere Mode. I honestly hate this card a lot, but uh, I felt like this weekend it performed because of cards like Goliath and the Thunderboard. I felt like this was just the best out to it. Like Beforehand, it wasn't because there was no way you're outing a Zombie Stein uh, or a Hot Red Negate after getting your hand ripped. Like, this, this deck doesn't really focus on ripping your opponent's hand because in the mirror match, they're doing the Dark Matter play. So you always get an extra card off the Dark Matter because you banish Roar to summon Hawk. So now that you guarantee a play for next turn, so you could Sphere Mode them, and then you already have a guaranteed play. So, like, this is really good. I feel like this one was, like, one of, like, the best ones against the Thunder deck because you get a guaranteed play. And, like, Twin Twist is very standard back row decks, so nothing too much there. Very nice, um, and it's uh, it's very clean that everything's a three of, so you're going to see at least you know one or something, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I feel like for side decking, you always want to have a three of because you want to see your side cards. Like, th there's no way you put like you never want to see different side cards in your hand. You want to see basically the best one. There's no point to ever play two of's in the side deck, in my opinion. Now onto the extra. I felt like this is just standard double colossus. This isn't very standard. People usually play three. But I felt like the like the deck doesn't really go in like it doesn't go into Colossus as much as it used to. Basically, the main play of this deck was just to Dark Matter your opponent to Oblivion. So I felt like two was enough. Um, Hot Red, we played Hot Red because we didn't play Zombie Stein, so we had to play around evenly matched this weekend. So we just had to play Hot Red. I think Crystal Wing's better as a card. Like Crystal Wing's better. But you just needed hot red for evenly, so and yeah, like you should definitely play hot red. Then um Galaxy Eye, Cypher Dragon was the nuts. Its effect is you can detach one XYZ material, take control of one monster, opponent controls, and it becomes the same name as you know, Galaxy Eye Cypher Dragon. So basically, um you could take your opponents use them as link material. And whenever you're reversing like Salad, you could take their Abyss Dweller and make their Abyss Dweller into Dark Matter Dragon, which is just insane. Oh, that's actually insane. You've done that a bunch, I guess, huh? Yeah, we did that a lot. And you could also take your opponent's Stalio. Like, they always end on Stalio. <laughs> like, this card was the nuts against that deck. So, yeah, I felt like that was the best rank 8 to play. And then Dark Matter, the, I think the heart and soul of this deck. I don't think this deck, is, I don't think this deck uh, would be what it is without it. Man, this has ban list all over it, dude. Yeah, it does. You know, maybe they hit the wrong card a couple years back. Maybe they should have kept the rulers and not Dark Matter. Uh, Dark Matter has been, like, literally insane. Um, sending Goliath and banishing three from your opponent's deck. Like, whenever it's the true Draco matchup and they had to banish three of their monsters, they basically lost to, you know, to that. Like, I didn't even, like... Like, as soon as he said he had zero cards in his extra deck, like... I still went for the Goliath play because I wanted to rip his extra deck or rip his main deck. I don't like, I don't care about his extra. I just care about his main. So that was very good. Also against like striker, you just taking hand traps out their deck is very good because like the way striker gets momentum is when they draw cards and they draw into like hand traps to stop your following play. And they won't draw into many hand traps if they're like, if they're banishing three from their deck. So that was very important. Yeah. Pisty was crazy this weekend. It was so crazy. So basically, the play with Pisty is you go White Dragon, you go White Dragon into LP, White Dragon adds Black Dragon, Eclipse Wyvern. Now, usually you would make Ulgar Pain or something, but n not in this case. You would turn Eclipse Wyvern, Eclipse Wyvern banishes the prize card, you banish Eclipse Wyvern for Black Dragon, prize card. you use Pisty's effect to reborn Eclipse Wyvern. You use the Eclipse Wyvern and the LP to make Elgar Pain, which is Levy in the Air. Elgar Pain summons Hot Red, 
and then you could use the prize card to add back Levianir. Equip a card, and then you could summon Saryuja, draw four cards, then summon the prize card from your extra deck, Dark Matter. So basically, that's guaranteed Hot Red, guaranteed Dark Matter, with just Dragon, which is insane. One yes. card... One card gets you all that like gets you dark matter and and hot red is just crazy. Also, you get you get to draw four cards, so that's four potential cards to draw into to a thunder card, and you can draw into like Sekka's light and all those good cards. So I felt like that was really good. So if yeah. someone wanted to stay alive against this deck, what's the one card they need to impermanence and win? Honestly, I guess like Saryuja, but like even then, if they have White Dragon, it's over. Like you always have to hit the Saryuja regardless. Like that's like the problem with this deck. You can't really hand trap it correctly, and that's pretty sad because you know that means like this deck is just like always winning because like you can't really hand trap correctly. If they open the correct card, they could just instantly win the game, and like that's why we decided to play the deck. To open like maybe two to three hand traps to win. Yeah, and you're always uh, chain blocking the Ash Blossom and Surja as well, right? Yeah, so like it's very hard. It makes the deck like, I mean, I, honestly, it just makes it overpowered in my opinion. So, yeah, um, Alpi, Alger Pain, very standard ones. Um, Link Spider, Reaper Docus. I think honestly, this whole extra is very standard. You know, Phoenix Unicorn, Sorcerer, and then Double Saryuja. Uh, I don't think I need to get into any of those. Those have been in like every single thunder deck for the last couple of months i basically played this deck last minute i was gonna play striker but uh after uh realizing how good dark matter was uh we just took it upon ourselves to play it but like the pisty combo made the deck uh what it like what it was for this weekend i don't think uh i don't think the deck would have been that great without pisty like thank god i looked into it and and then came up uh, with the idea to play Pisty in the deck because it really did bring a lot of plays to the deck. It really helped you play through hand traps a lot more than before, too. So I was pretty happy for that. So this was your top eight 3v3 YCS Atlanta deck list. And for now, would you want to change anything or it's pretty nice the way it is? Um, I don't think I'll change anything. I've honestly been playing this uh, for all my luxury tournaments and for... Uh, I think I'll continue playing this till the deck gets hit. If anything, I have to change the prize card because I don't own it. But <laughs> uh, that could just easily be a third Levinier, like I said in the video. So for anyone that doesn't have, you know, 1,500 drop, it's easily replaced by Levinier. Very nice, very nice. Any shout-outs you have? Uh, yes, I have a lot of shout-outs. So shout-out to my team, uh, Team Scott Robertson Page, obviously, Cam and Christian. Uh, then shout-out to uh, luxury gaming nick callis jt roly um and then shout out to some people that i met over the weekend some people I hung out with like arnold hector me and i'm pretty sure that was that was it you know basically the whole lug squad you know i think that's pretty much it also go check out the luxury gaming facebook page like always yeah of course we're gonna provide the links down below so people can you know check them out uh, thanks again, Honey. Bordel out.